Cool. Um, yeah, cool. So I, I've been to Full Frontal for the last three years, and I've like it's a proper highlight of my developer conference here. And I'm totally before I start, I'm honoured to be speaking here. So thanks a lot for having me. Um, that's cool. Uh, I'm Ben. Uh, I'm from down from Oxford for the day, uh, where I help out with JS Oxford. Uh, I work at a company called White October. This is our oak leaf, um, and then. This is the unofficial logo of uh, JavaScript Adventure Club, uh, which is, yeah, <laughs> adventurers in the house. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of secret club. Um, cool. So I asked you to visit this URL, so you've got, still got a few minutes. Uh, we'll use it in about 15 minutes time, uh, hopefully, and do some demos. So um, yeah, if you could visit here.ffconf.com.org. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, this demo thing that I've been working on is, is fairly new. I've tried it like three times this week, and every time it's failed in a new way. <laughs> um, so, but I think it's going to work really well today. So, um, but I just want you to kind of be on my side <laughs> if things go wrong and I start crying. Um, also, uh, we're going to need your phones to be on for quite a long time. So if you could switch on or switch off your lock screen. Um, so we're going to need it to be on for about 15 minutes. So. Um, yeah, like general settings, iOS, and display settings on Android. So if you could do that over the next few minutes, that would be awesome. Um, also, at some point, hopefully, there will be um, some flashing lights going on. So if you've got any problem with that, be prepared. There'll be a, a note down the bottom. I'm kind of like mostly saying this because I'm quite proud to have a presentation as a health warning at the start. Um, so yeah, cool. Right, OK, so I'm going to talk about getting close to the web. Um, so the web allows us to kind of, one of the beautiful things is it allows us to create content and have that content consumed anywhere else on the planet. And over the last few years, we've, um, we've kind of started using more interactive uh, transports that allow us to have interactions with those people um, other than the other side of the planet. So kind of stuff like chats, um, FaceTime, or all that kind of thing. Um, it's really, really powerful. But what I'm going to talk about is <laughs> taking those same technologies that we use to interact with other people on the other side of the world, um, but into a kind of like local, room-wide context, and how those can kind of make sense and be utilized when we're sitting right next to each other, and what kind of things we can make. I had a really kind of like serious, um, pointed set of slides, but I've, I kind of trashed them earlier this week, and I'm going to talk about jumbotrons. Um, so, right, uh, this, it'll kind of come around again. So, uh, has anyone heard of jumbotrons? Yeah, cool, all of us, <laughs> pretty much. So they're the big screens on the side of like buildings and at like um, sports centers, games, not centers, uh, and like yeah, just big old screens. <coughs> uh, this is a big one. This is uh, Charlotte Speedway in America, and you can see the cars for scale. Um, this is actually the biggest one. This is um, in a shopping center in, in China, and it's 32 meters across and over 500 meters long, right? So this is like measuring screen size in kilometers. <laughs> it's like pretty, pretty nuts. Um, and yeah, you should check out some videos of that. It's, it's insane. Um, Jumbotron fame is a thing that when you've got a big screen and the video live video gets pointed on someone, they always do something crazy. They've got these like five seconds to do something. Uh, related to that is uh, the kiss cam. And when you're on this, uh, you've got to kiss the next person, actually. I'm going to leave this up here for a second, because there's like about five or six ways that it is independently funny. Um, so cool. So Jumbotrons, the first Jumbotron was released in uh, an expo in Japan in 1985. And it was a Sony Jumbotron. Um, so yeah, it was uh, big. Uh, this is actually a picture from a postcard. And I really like the idea of someone sending a postcard of like a large TV to someone else. Um, that would be really cool. Um, and it was, yeah, it was huge. It was 40 meters by 20 meters. And you can see, well, you can't really see, that building there is a McDonald's. Um, so yeah, big old screen. <coughs> and so the way that they could make the screen, so it wasn't a single screen. What it was was a set of, um, it was an array of these jumbotron modules, like around this size. And these were all connected together to kind of make this giant display. 
Um, and this is about, this, this is some um, kind of close-ups of these modules. This is from um, Mike's Electric Stuff, which is a great YouTube channel about this guy tearing down uh, different things. And so they basically CRT little pixels and around this size, big chunky outdoor equipment, uh, kind of cool bits of kit. <coughs> so this is one of those modules. Um, and this is where it kind of comes back again. <laughs> um, so the reason this module can be used um, to kind of create a big jumbotron is like it's got three different properties. So the first one is the, it's uh, connectivity. So it's able to be connected to other drum, uh, jumbotron modules, right? Um, and it was done through this uh, yeah, data cable that would run along it and pick out parts. Uh, it's got a display, a 16 by 6 display, uh, pretty cool. Um, and it's also got proximity. And so that's very key. Like, so to create this big picture, you basically need to know that this Jumbotron uh, module is next to this other one. And then, so those three properties allow it to, <coughs> to create this big interface. And why this is relevant to the, the close web is uh, our phones have these same properties. Uh, so um, when we've got a phone browser, we've got uh, web transports um, for connectivity. We've got a display, um, which is a lot higher resolution. Um, and also, our phones, in a kind of close range environment, our phones have proximity to each other. Um, but that's a key thing is that that's variable, right? unlike the Jumbotron units, which are like, like glued in or whatever. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to cover these three different topics uh, over the next half hour. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> cool. Uh, right, so connectivity. So the, the key thing to kind of making a large interface that combines several devices together is being able to connect those devices uh, to each other and to transfer data between them. And with the web, we've got a bit of a problem, or it, it, it gets a bit hard. Uh, and that's because of the fact the request response nature of HTTP. So basically, we've got this first browser comes along, posts a message up to the, the, the cloud or whatever, the server. And, um, and this other browser comes along, and it doesn't know that that data has changed. And it doesn't know to make another request. Um, so kind of keeping these two uh, people in sync becomes a challenge with the web. So we've got a, a few solutions using the web platform for this. Polling, we can just straight poll, keep on asking, has the data changed? There's an obviously overhead there. Long polling is slightly more advanced. It'll hold on to that, release it. Like, we all know this. <laughs> um, web sockets allows you to kind of create that duplex connection that is uh, maintained. But then, so this would be the general way that people, the most popular way of people transferring data between devices in the room but you've got this overhead of all the messages have to go through a server. So if your server is far away or if it's a slow server, you're connecting two devices together is always going to be a problem. Um, that's where WebRTC comes in, because we can create this peer-to-peer -peer connection um, between devices. So we can basically bypass having to go through a kind of slow server. Um, great, that fits. Cool. So I'm going to do a quick demo, and I'm not going to dwell on it too much, because we've actually got quite a lot to cover. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer data from this device to that one, and I'm going to do it over these four channels. So we're going to have WebRTC, uh, WebSockets, long polling, and then a delayed long polling to emulate a, a server that's slow. Um, so let's see this. Oh, actually, sorry. Sometimes the web RTC doesn't work. <laughs> but I can refresh it, because it's a web page. Cool. Uh, yeah, so we've got web RTC and web sockets. And you can see those two are streaming. And you can see that the web RTC is slightly in ahead. Uh, and then the bottom two are coming through in chunks. Uh, so you can kind of see that as the server gets slower, those chunks get bigger. Um, <coughs> Right, so if you've got two devices next to each other, this difference in that latency makes all the difference, because as my finger changes to draw another point in that star, I expect this to change as well in the same time. So just quickly, we can, we can visualize this in a slightly better way if we use time to stretch these points out, and then we can rotate it around so we're looking at more of a kind of like useful chart thing. Uh, yeah, rotating graphs. <laughs> 
So there's like, you can see those uh, two streaming transports uh, a little clearer, clearer there. Um, and you can see that as the long polling server gets a kind of higher latency to it, the number of points that are transferred in each packet become bigger. Right, this is where it gets interesting. The other transports, right? So those are our web transports, right? Like, so that's how we kind of traditionally keep two devices in sync, or traditionally, but yeah. Uh, so there's other transports when we are considering several devices being in the same room. Uh, one of them is audio. Uh, so all our devices have microphones and speakers. So using that, you're able to kind of transmit information between devices by them being next to each other. Um, there's a good library about using ultrasonic networking, which I'll, maybe, I'll share afterwards. Um, visual, our devices have cameras, and our devices have screens, so we can use that as a method of transferring data between devices. <coughs> Human, uh, so this is a really interesting one. Like, so when you get uh, a two-factor auth message, and then you type that into your laptop, you've basically been the transport of information between those two devices. Um, and there's like, there's, you, can, you can utilize that in some interesting ways. Um, and human to human. So I can, I can read something, and I can articulate it to you, and then you can put it into another device. And that way, we basically, the chain of us communicating between each other, um, we provided a transport between these two devices. And there's a really kind of cool game called Sky, Sky Space Team. What's it? Space Team, <laughs> which, which uses this. Uh, sorry, that was pointy. <laughs> uh, right. So that's connectivity. So we've talked about web transports and how when we have devices in close proximity to each other, uh, we can then use other, trans other ways of getting information between them. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about displays. And what we're going to do is... We're going to use the displays. We're going to join together several displays to create one interaction. And the displays that we're going to use are your phones. So what you want to do is get out that page that uh, you visited a little while ago. And yeah, this is going to take a little while to explain. <laughs> uh, I need to plug this in here. Right, and it's uh, kind of important that, or not important, but um, don't press anything until I say, because I need to go over the rules first. <laughs> right, so you can't see, but it's just accessed my camera. That's the wrong one. Hello? <laughs> that one is the one we want. Reload. Allow. Cool. I've got a tripod. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Remy asked me to make use of the big screen, uh, so I think I'm doing that. <laughs> um, cool. Is that everyone right? So it's not very clear. Cool. <laughs> Done. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, are you able to see yourselves here? Is that not not exactly? Are you? Is there any way we can turn the lights up or something? Um, uh, okay, uh, how do we do this? Actually, uh, no. Um, are people able to make out where they are in this, or is that too dark? Uh, how do I do this? Is it possible to try and get the lights on, or is that not going to happen? Because it's just, it would be quite a lot. It's the back lights that are Ah. That's better, is it? <laughs> okay, I can see you all totally fine on this, but uh, maybe, no. Okay, cool. Uh, no, because you can't see on the screen, I don't think. Sorry about this. Yeah, yeah, it does. 
OK, are we able to guess where we are? Are you, are you up for that? <laughs> Excellent, cool. Right. OK, right. <laughs> uh, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to, so what you should see on your phones is the three buttons, right, left, and down, OK? And what we're going to do is we're going to synchronize our positions um, using these buttons. I'll, I'll try not to walk in front of that. Um, and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have this sweeping line. And what's going to happen is when this line passes you, when I've told you when it is, um, I want you to press the kind of corresponding button. So this one would be the blue right button. Um, but yeah, when I've told you that. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a blue line that goes across this way, uh, an orange line that goes across this way, and then a pink line that goes down that way. And that will kind of match those three buttons. Right. So, uh, is anyone not on this screen at all? Um, I guess you guys, you. Right, what I want you to do is I want you to pick someone in the screen and just pretend that you're them. Uh, right, so, kind of. And likewise, right, okay, this is a bit of an odd one. Uh, right, okay, so if you are here, there, uh, if you could pretend that you're actually here, uh, there's like a bit of a weird bug, uh, <laughs> and this this will help, I think. Uh, so yeah, to do with the calibration. So thank you, and uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah. So if you're on that side, just pretend you're here. So what you want to do is you want to pick a definite point on here, um, and then yeah, when it passes over, press the button. A kind of tip for this. Uh, so I've been. Oh, you've already calibrated yourself. Can you reset yours actually? Um, Sorry, unless, yeah. Um, sorry, if you, if you put in any data, try and reset it now, because uh, we'll start from afresh. Um, OK, so a tip is when you don't look up and then look down at your device and press it, keep looking at the screen, have your finger ready, and just press it when it passes, so you're focusing on the screen. OK, cool. Uh, is everyone ready for this? Yeah. Cool, excellent. Uh, the main thing is relax, because uh, it's like, <laughs> Is it, it, there's something like weirdly stressful about this? Um, but okay, and it doesn't matter if you miss one cycle. If you catch the second one after that, that's fine. And we'll also have a thing with all of the lines at the same time later, so you can catch up. Uh, go. <laughs> so yeah, we're pressing our blue one when it passes over us. Um, and once you do it twice, you should get a tick, uh, and that tick will mean that you're calibrated. Um, Yay, calibrations. <laughs> right, OK, cool. So now, uh, and you'll have a, if you've not calibrated yet, you'll have a chance afterwards. Uh, now it's going to come on from the other side, and it's going to be orange. So I want you to press the orange button. It's, it's stressful, right? It's like. <laughs> cool. Excellent. We've got some calibrations. Right, OK. And then finally, the line's going to come down from the top. Uh, so this is going to be like the pink one. So you press the downward button when it passes you. So pick your point. Uh, whatever. Your yeah, head. Yeah. <coughs> your eyes. <laughs> yeah, you've got it. Kind of. Cool. Are we calibrated? Cool. And what you'll see is uh, a button should appear at the bottom, so you should scroll down now. Don't press that, because uh, we're going <laughs> to press it. <laughs> right. OK, so uh, just a quick opportunity for anyone who's not calibrated one of these. These are all the lines at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I've got really used to this, actually. It's, like, it's, kinda, it's nice. <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, and now we're going to get started soon. Right. OK, so the way this works is we're able to take um, these. The first two samples are um, basically x and 1 minus x. And so what we can do is we can work out the position in your, the room, even though we're on different clocks, by working out the angle between those two. And then the point, there's a point of symmetry between that, so we can use that to work out the y position. Uh, we can basically 
yeah, we can work out your position. Um, and also, on your phones now, you should be able to see a green dot which represents where you are in the room on this image. Yeah, you're seeing that. Cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to press our buttons at the same time. And it's fairly vital that we, we press it in the same kind of period. So uh, I'm going <laughs> to tell you when. Um, it's going to be in about 10 or 11 seconds. So we can relax again. <laughs> I think I'm probably the one getting stressed here. Uh, cool. Right, so get ready. Press the demo button at the bottom. Now. Right, so we've got five seconds to press it. Is everyone pressing that? Yeah, it went black. Sorry. Black is good. <laughs> right, OK, so the rest of this is just like playing a video kind of thing. <laughs> um, right, so first of all, uh, we're going to do some screen sharing. OK, cool. Oh. Right, yeah, screw it. We're going to do some screen sharing. So what's going to happen is <clears throat> you're going to see an image, and you're going to see part of that image across your device. And the part of that image depends on where you are in the, in the audience. So you're seeing a kind of small section of image. And this is the image that you're seeing. This is a, a photo of my room uh, with some bike lights and a long exposure when it was snowing. Um, and yeah, what's interesting about this is like, so we're basically catering this. You, you've seen that, right? Some of you. Yeah, cool. Uh, we're catering this um, to your particular position within the room. And <clears throat> so yeah, we're basically using your context with your device within the context of the room, and yeah, that happens. <clears throat> right, OK. The next thing, so that was between you and your device. But what I want you to do is I want you to turn your phone around. And what we should see is a gradient of red over that side through to green on this one, uh, which is kind of working. <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Look backwards. It's like, uh, yeah, that works. So. Yeah, and now it's red up at the back, uh, so the top parts are red, and then green down the bottom. Okay, so we're basically we've switched context from thinking of you and your device to your device within the environment. Uh, so that's a subtle but interesting and relevant thing. <laughs> I'm actually going to exit full screen because there's some right. Okay, so the next section, uh, I'm just going to oh. Can you see that better? Yeah, cool, perfect. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to think of timing. So all our devices are slightly out of sync there. And you can see this when we start flashing them. So keep them held up. Uh, so everyone's devices are kind of like flashing slightly out of sync because we press the button at the different times. Um, so what's, what we're going to do is when they stop, OK, cool. Right, so now we can see it even exaggerated when we use colors, right? So they're kind of flashing different colors, and you can see how out of time we're. But there is something quite nice about that x and 1 minus x, and that symmetry point is consistent across all of our devices. So the next time that our devices start flashing, they'll flash over, over a period where they will gradually kind of get back in sync. So after a little while, we should start seeing everyone kind of getting together, and that's working, and that's Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right, keep them held up. Uh, there's more. <laughs> so now uh, we can go through colors, and that's synchronized with mine. So you can see the blue bar at the top. Everyone's now pink. There's a few blues. <laughs> and uh, white. So actually, everyone kind of seems all right here. But if someone is five or 10 seconds out of sync, um, then it would be good if you turned off your demo now, because uh, that would kind of ruin stuff later on. So I think I saw a couple of, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so if you're out of sync by five or 10 seconds, please turn off the demo. But I think we're all right. I forget what's happening now. <laughs> this is like really odd. OK, cool, we're flashing in time. Uh, right. OK, yeah, so now we're, we've started that same flashing as we had before. But yeah, so if, you, if you're still white, because I think you are, there's a couple of people who are quite out of sync, but actually it'll be all right. Um, so yeah, now we're doing that same action again, where uh, like that same animation of flashing through colors, and you can kind of see that we're more in sync now. Right, so now we're going to think about movement, OK? So first of all, we're going to have that same gradient as we had before, where it was like red through to green 
or the other way around. Yeah, so red over there, green over this side. And now we're going to animate this across. So you can see the blues coming in. Uh, and you can see now we're kind of turning to pinks. And then I think at some point we're moving back. Yeah, we're moving back now. So we can kind of see this um, kind of this gradient moving across the room. But I mean, that's kind of hard because it's this like linear -y thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, so what we can do is instead of using gradient, we can just turn lights on. So that was, every, that was light going up to the back and then down to the front and then off to the side and back again. And then on from this side and back again. Cool. What have we got next? <laughs> oh, yeah, rotation. So now it's kind of going around the room uh, and should be going back again. Yeah, cool. So that kind of came around. Excellent. That's good. <laughs> uh, what have we got now? Right, OK, so uh, we're going to talk about sharing capabilities. So what we're going to do is if you keep your phones held up, um, that timestamp is consistent with also my laptop, which has some different features. So we should see in a second. Right, OK. So we've synchronized this with the time, with the sound from my laptop, right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and then now it should come in from the side, and then from the other side. No, out again. I forget this. <laughs> this side. And then back again. Cool. And then there'll be a different sound. Oh, no. Come down, and then there'll be a different sound, and it'll come back down here. It's really hard. Cool. There we go. Right, OK. So that was sharing. So now we're going to talk about sharing capabilities. So that was like syncing them. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the capabilities of all our phones. So what we want you to do is turn up your volume on your phone and keep it held up. Uh, there aren't going to be any vision here. Yeah, so just like put your volume as high as it will go. And for this one, we're going to turn off this screen and be quiet. We should get a sound coming from the back. Cool. And then it should go back up. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, cool. And now we're going to rotate this around the room. I think that way around. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. And then we're going to go about a bit faster. Yeah, that works all right. Cool. Uh, and what I want you to do now is uh, turn to face the center of the room, like wherever you are, and hold your phone to face the center of the room. And we're going to like combine everything together, right? So just like, so now it should rotate around the room, uh, turning our lights on, and then rotate around, changing the color, and then changing another color. And then this is now an HSV kind of shade around the place. And then it should turn white. And now we should make a sound at all the same time. Cool, so that's displays. Um, Uh, yeah, I'm glad that works. <laughs> that was like being a bit of a worry. Um, OK, so we're going to talk about proximity now. Um, so that, we kind of had this approximate proximity throughout the room. OK, so we're kind of, um, I put too many demos on this. Um, like we had a vague approximation of like a couple of meters where we were in the room and stuff like that. But when we've got devices that are right next to each other, we want to know kind of closer range than a couple of meters. <laughs> Uh, obviously. Uh, so one thing we can use is AR codes, uh, so like augmented reality. Um, and these are like simple, simplified QR codes that you can kind of see their position better. Uh, sorry, one second. Um, so yeah, and we can do this with JavaScript, right? So what I'm going to do is have another video. This isn't a view. 
I'm going to take this. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what I've got is an AR code here. And what's happening is you can see that red line is being drawn on here. right? So uh, we're able to kind of track where it is. And the classic AR code thing is uh, we draw a horse. <laughs> right? So this is like a horse running. We can like explore this kind of thing. Uh, which is nice. Uh, so that's like, so we can use AR codes. Uh, sorry, yeah. This is the part of, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we can use AR codes like as they're intended for like augmented reality, stuff like that. But there's actually something kind of interesting we can do when we start showing AR codes on a kind of like dynamic surface. So here we've got an AR code in the middle of the screen. And what I can do is I've got an AR code scanner on this using. Uh, get user media, and I can just like shine this here, and now I can move this around by how I how I see it, if that makes sense. So as I kind of point this down the side, I'm able to kind of move this AR code around because these two devices are connected, and then I turn it around. That will kind of keep in sync here as well. <laughs> and a really interesting property about this is that this should also work on this, right? So should hopefully, yeah. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm interacting with a, a kind of projected image. And because I'm making that projected, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so we can kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, because we're, we're, yeah, we're just doing some stuff. <laughs> it's kind of, it's fun. Um, so there's some interesting things that you can do when you, have control over where you're projecting the PR, QR code. And one of those things that you can do is, is to find devices and find out their locations relative to each other. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of went a bit too fast there. Um, not that. This. Cool. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to adjust this a little bit. This will take a little while to set up. And it's kind of crap once it is set up. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's one of those. Um, so, right. What I can do is when, well, <laughs> I haven't thought about how to explain this one very well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get these devices and try and find out where they are relative to each other, which makes sense. <coughs> Sorry, this will take a little second. It's called the Jumbotron. Jumbotron. <laughs> right, excellent. And Scarab will do this one as well. Uh, sorry, you have to bear with me a second. Uh, I've got like tons of things. Uh, Jumbotron. Right, that will probably do if that works. Cool. Right. So I'll make that full screen. Right, so we've got these three devices here. What we can do is we can uh, put an AR code on each of them, right? And so I'm going to take this. This is kind of really awkward. But, so I'm basically recognizing, lo locating these QR codes, which isn't working amazingly. This is probably not going to work. <laughs> but I've had kind of stuff working, so. Right. Uh, OK. I think that should do it. It might not do it, and we'll have to do it again. Uh, so what happens now is like we can put an image on each of these devices. So there's a full frontal logo. And we should be able to share this image amongst them. <laughs> Right, so this is, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's, that's using proximity. Um, yeah, cool. I think I'm done for time, I've got five minutes. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, I've uh, shown you a couple of things today. Uh, first one, props to Seb around, there you are. Uh, that kind of big device thing, Seb did Pixel phones a few years ago, which is like 
I, I looked through the code for it, it's like far better <laughs> and like a bit cooler. So uh, ask Seg about that. I actually mentioned this to Seb a, a couple of weeks ago and he, he brought lasers into it in about like 20 seconds. <laughs> so he was like, uh, yeah, that was good. Um, junkyard Jumbotron, like this last thing, there's an MIT project a couple of years ago uh, called Junkyard Jumbotron, which kind of combined these devices, but that used is uh, server-side Python imaging libraries and stuff, whereas this is all front-end web technologies. Um, and those sounds are from patatap.com, which is open source, which is cool. Uh, I'd go to that just for fun, funsies. Um, some codes. <laughs> Uh, so I've got everything that I showed you today pretty much is up. So there's Ben Fox and Position Sync, uh, which is that thing that shared the image around, uh, but it's super ugly. Um, the, it actually, um, where's Soli? Uh, it uses TweenJS. Ah, there. It heavily uses TweenJS, all of that, it's like, which is a super cool thing. Um, so yeah, that uses that, but I wouldn't actually look at it too hard because it's pretty not very nice. Uh, Jumbotron, that thing there is all up on GitHub as well, but it's kind of incomplete because there's parts on, on this presentation that I wrote really late at night and I can't remember how they work. And uh, so I've not been able to like, <laughs> it's like, it's really weird that. Um, so yeah, and there's also <coughs> the JS uh, Aruko library that I used for that um, is up on GitHub. It's got like three stars and it's like one of the coolest things, like you can hack around with it. And there's so many things um, on GitHub like that. And so, if you do one thing, uh, start that. <laughs> I'll do that. Um, cool. I think that's everything. So thanks. <laughs>